Hey everyone, I am Nintendo Rubble Jance and welcome back to Nintendo Prime. And today I'm going to be telling you about a product for Switch that is in a class of its own. And we're doing something extremely rare because I have to, you know, be honest with you guys. I was sent this controller for free. I was sent multiple of them for free. More on that later in the video. But I was sent them because this company paid for an ad, right? We did an ad last week for this controller uh, with my good son, Timmy. <laughs> uh, if you guys saw that ad, you know what I'm talking about. But here's the thing. That's the disclaimer, right? I'm about to suggest that every one of you that plays with a standard controller in TV mode, tabletop mode, whatever, on Switch, that you are missing out, I have to put this disclaimer in. I was paid to make an ad. So I'm not supposed to review a product like this. So I'm not going to call this a review. No, no, no. I'm just going to say that this is a must buy and should now be on every current and future Switch owners list if you want to have a better gameplay experience on Switch. And I'll explain why in a moment. First, this video is sponsored and brought to you by Into the AM. Into the AM is a premium t-shirt company that sells super soft pre-shrunk shirts at intotheam.com. And you can actually go there and get a whole bunch of standard tees. There's actually a basic tee sale right now for 30% off of just standard color t-shirts. And if you want printed shirts as well, they have those. I'm actually wearing one of their, their new prints uh, right now. Uh, I absolutely love these shirts and been wearing a ton of them since they first sponsored us last year. If you would like to get your hands on them and save a little bit more, you can use the code Nintendo Prime 10 at checkout or just go to intotheam.com slash Nintendo Prime 10. We'll have a link to that down in the description and the pinned comment. Getting into what we're talking about here, we're talking about the Ghoulie Kit King Kong 2 controller. Uh, if you want to actually get a, a kind of a look at the box, this, this, this is what, 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 what comes when you order it. Uh, you can only buy them on Amazon at the moment. Um, and it's definitely from China. It's a made in, in, in China product. It's called the King Kong 2 Pro Controller. Uh, and it's from Ghoulie Kit, who has made a solid controller before, uh, but there's some things that make this controller special. As I open up this brand new one uh, that we'll talk about in a moment why I'm opening it up, you can get a look at, it comes in this nice case here, um, and inside you'll see the controller. Now, I'm not really going to handle this controller myself. I'm going to kind of leave this alone, but I just wanted to give you guys a look inside the box. Um, so inside the box, you got some uh, this, which we're actually going to need. You get, you get your Ghoulie Kit stickers, uh, and then you get basically an instruction manual. Uh, and this, this I believe is just the charging cord. Um, yep, that is just the pretty long, actually, uh, flat-based USB-C charging cable. Uh, so yeah, that's really, really cool. But this controller is special uh, for a number of reasons. It's not just because it has a nice presentation in the box and, and, and all of that. Um, and it's not just because I think the controller looks nice with the black and the silver accents, reminding me a lot of like an Xbox controller. Um, it, what makes it special is the primary thing they're advertising and the reason they bought an ad on my channel. The Hall sensor sticks, these control sticks right here, are supposedly zero drift sticks. They use electromagnets uh, instead of contact pads. What happens in Joy-Cons and really any normal controller, including this Xbox controller could happen to eventually, is when you move your stick around, it actually is contacting a physical pad. That pad is what's registering your movements, giving you those, those precise movements. But those pads wear out over time and eventually drift. Essentially, every controller that's out on the market right now that's not using these sticks will actually you know, drift someday. Even if it you don't experience drift during your lifetime of using the product, it will happen, okay? It's inevitable, and when Nintendo said that, after they said we improved the Joy-Cons and, oh, but drift is inevitable, it is inevitable. But obviously, Joy-Con drift and even Pro Controller drift for Switch have become significantly more common as the pads seem to wear down quicker on these devices than they do on others. It could come down to design principles, could come down to cheaper materials. We don't really know why they seem to be wearing out quicker than other devices do, but they do. And the bottom line is we shouldn't even be using that technology anymore. That technology is old and has been around since the 90s. These hall sensor sticks, like this shouldn't be like 
a, a feature that this thing should advertise over the controllers that come with our systems. The Xbox and PlayStation 5 don't use hull sensor sticks either. It's really confusing that we haven't gotten to the point where we've moved beyond what we know is a fundamental problem and has already been solved. So assuming that these hull sensor sticks will meet the claims, and so far I haven't had any drift, but of course... How, how can you simulate four or five years of use, right? Like, it's it's almost impossible. But hall sensing sticks have actually been around for almost a decade plus, and pretty much nobody uses them because they're a little bit more expensive. I mean, when we're talking a little bit more expensive, it's going to add about 10 to 15 cents more to manufacturing. I think customers are willing to pay a premium to get sticks that don't drift. You're already charging 60, 70 bucks for controllers as is. So is it really that big a deal? I don't think so. Uh, but yeah, the hull the hull sensing sticks are absolutely amazing. And um, what's really cool about these is they actually have a zero dead zone. Now, by default, they do have a dead zone in here because of magnets. When magnets get around it, even from like your speakers and your phone, uh, it could throw the sticks off a little bit. But if you want that super super precise FPS gameplay, uh, just through some button combos, you can actually turn off the dead zone, and there is a legit zero dead zone with this controller so you can get that super fine precise aiming like you might want in competitive matches uh, obviously you can also hook this this up uh, wired to your switch as well it'll work um what's great though and why i said there's like you know this is a full-on replacement uh isn't just because of these hall sensing sticks which are going to get a lot of the attention it's that this is a fully featured controller okay you have <clears throat> amiibo support can you tell me another third-party controller that has amiibo support well, maybe Power A, right? Officially licensed products. Nope. There is not a single third party that has NFC functionality and full Amiibo support. This is the only one. How they're able to do it, why nobody else can do it, I assume there's a bunch of patents around it with Nintendo, and that's why other companies don't have it, but this one did it. Hey, it ain't up to me. You know what? If they're breaking the law and doing this, that's for them and Nintendo to worry about. I'm going to worry about talking about an absolutely amazing controller. Um... So, yeah, it has that. It has rumble. Now, it's got five different rumble settings, so you can increase or decrease uh, the amount of rumble. And if I had to say if there was one weak point in this, it probably would be the rumble. It's, it appears to be using the, the, the extremely basic rumble motors and just ramps them up and then ramps them down. They don't really create any extra noise doing that or any visible shake. But, like, you know, I pretty much keep it, you know, ramped up at around four um, yeah, if you go to five, it feels like it's maybe shaking too much. And if you're on like one or two, you can, can't really feel it at all. I guess that's the point of adjusting the rumble to your own sensitivity settings. And yes, you could turn it off entirely, of course, if you want. Uh, but there's so much more to this controller can do. Look at this, this piece of paper they, they, they include with it. Look how big the instructions are. Now one, one side is going to be in Chinese. The other side is in English. And this piece of paper is highly important and talks about all the different button combos you got to do to set things um so as an example there's autopilot gaming now autopilot gaming is where you can basically set it up like a macro and have it automatically press buttons so uh to give you an example where this might be useful there's obviously certain fighting games of fighting combos you can kind of pre-program your fighting combos and then just hit one button so if you're in smash and you have a specific combo you use a lot you can actually pre-program that and use that you can also use it to uh do things like hey you know on nintendo switch how they don't let you mass delete friends and it could take forever if you're trying to clear out your friend list uh you could set up a button combo on here that'll automatically just do it and it'll just keep doing it until you tell it to stop so that's a really cool automated thing in fact bob wolf actually uh has showed how to do this in the past so credit to him uh for that with a prior controller and this controller still has that functionality. So it's just kind of an additional feature. Now, when you look at this, there is a lot more. Um, and oh, by the way, I, I did I forget to mention motion controls it has motion controls. So I actually play tested this, uh, comparing this to a normal uh, pro controller, you know, which usually has the best uh, motion controls straight from Nintendo and with Joy-Con as well. I tried and I played some Splatoon 2 matches and I felt no difference in how it controlled between the controllers, which means even the motion controls are on point with this, which isn't always true with third-party controllers. Sometimes that's the one area, you know, besides the missing feature, if it does have a feature, that's usually the one feature that seems to not be as good as what Nintendo's offering. Not the case with this. So literally, it's like the perfect controller in many, many different cases. Now, you can see here all the different um, things you got here. So you got the motion sense, aim assist on PC. Again, 
That's going to be mostly just a PC only thing. It's where there's a little bit of aim assist. Some people consider that to be cheating. That's obviously going to be left up to uh, the beholder, but it is there for people who want a little bit of extra aim assist on PC games. Um, it can also help you keep up with mouse and keyboard players a bit. Um, then you have a, a long vibration once for clearing all your settings. So if you just want to wipe everything you set on there, you can. Um, and the no dead zone mode, as I mentioned, it has that no dead zone mode if you want for that precise, and it works by the way on PC and Switch. Um, and then ZL and ZR sensitivity setting, um, you can set how sensitive the triggers are. Now these triggers, um, it, it's very interesting when, when, when we talk about this because, you know, what people really want are, um, you know, analog triggers. Uh, and these do have actual buttons that are pressed, but they're not really any different than I would say Nintendo's controllers. You could just control like how far you have to go down for it to register the click. Um, it's not really going to do anything for like racing games. I know um, there, there, there is some back and forth on this when it comes to um, PC. Some people were able to get it to kind of sort of work with how hard you're pressing it in. Um, but when you look at their video breakdowns of it, it's literally a lever that's that's hitting a button. So I'm, I'm not really sure about that. And then the sensitivity just kind of adjusts something on that lever to see how far you have to push down. Um, but whatever, all the, you know, there's no games on Switch that take advantage of, um, you know, th that kind of action anyway. So for Switch purposes, it doesn't really matter. Uh, maybe if you can get it to work on PC, that, that, that's good for you. Uh, but the biggest thing that I want to talk about with this controller is even when you hold it, everything about this feels premium, right? From you getting it in a nice little hard case, not just a, a normal box, to when you actually hold it. Now, obviously, how people want their controllers to feel is going to, in, in the hand is going to vary person to person. But I can tell you right now, this feels like the nicest controller I've ever held. It's got a textured back back here that is, is really, you know, just really nice to the touch. <laughs> sort of hear it a little bit there. Uh, but it gives you a really nice grip. And then this front has like this really soft matte plastic that I, I, I really like. It feels so good in the hand. It almost feels like you're holding velvet, if, if, if that's... The right way to describe it, almost like you're holding velvet. Uh, it, it, it's so great. And one thing too that I didn't mention in the ad, and I didn't really thought think I'd care about it that much, are these buttons. So look, buttons on a lot of controllers can feel even like on Xbox, it can feel a little mushy. Uh, they're usually just membrane because it's just a hey, you hit the button. It doesn't need you know to be special, even though yeah, we all like mechanical keyboards. Um, and they work really well for gaming, and even some people prefer it for typing. Um, there, there's not always necessarily a bunch of advantages to it unless you're rapidly pressing the key, and then obviously having a proper mechanical switch is a better for gaming if you have to rapidly press a key. Well, the thing is, they put in semi-mechanical switches into here. Now, I'm not going to take this apart because, frankly, I love this controller too much to even want to risk damaging it, and they don't cover any of the screw holes. So it's not like it's hard to take apart, uh, but I personally don't want to risk damaging this at all because this is now my main controller. Now, if I end up buying another one, and then I have a second one here, we'll talk about that in a bit, um, then maybe I'll decide to take it apart. Uh, but for right now, this is my main controller, so I'm, I'm not going to I'm not gonna mess around with that. But what's interesting is that there are semi-mechanical sticks in here, so they still end up touching a membrane at the very end, but the actual press of it has a, me a mechanism in there with a spring that just makes these button presses feel super nice. I, it, it's hard to describe, and that's the problem with talking about a controller, that everything I'm talking about is so hard to describe without just me handing you the controller and saying, here you go. You hold it. You tell me what you think. You use it. The D-pad feels perfect. I, I have zero complaints about the D-pad. Now, some people do prefer the roller-style D-pads like on an Xbox. That's not what this is. It's just an, an, a traditional D-pad. But the D-pad works flawlessly like any other, you know, e like you look at the Switch Pro Controller on uh, Nintendo. I actually like the feel of this D-pad a bit more. I feel like the edges aren't quite as sharp but yet grippy enough that you're not miss hitting on the D-pad. I feel like that's a really important feature for some of those indie games and old school games where you really want an accurate D-pad. Um, this one has, has had no issues with me at all. Now, again, I can't speak to how long this controller is going to last. I can't speak to, you know, is it going to break down over time? Uh, you know, is there really going to be never any drift with this controller? I mean, the technology kind of gets rid of the problem that makes drift happen, but, you know, I mean... People haven't been using these because they're expensive. So how do we really know um, what else to say about it? So the reason, though, I want to mention this is it's a $70 controller. So this isn't like some cheap $25, $35 
you know, Power A controller you walk into your local Walmart or Best Buy and grab. Uh, this is a premium controller. It's the same price as a Switch Pro controller. Well, you can actually get Switch Pro controllers cheaper than that now. So it's more expensive. It's not as expensive as the Power A Fusion controller, although that's been on sale as well. Uh, the Power A Fusion controller's missing features. And frankly, the Power A Fusion controller was my main controller just because I was so tired of the drift in my uh, main Pro controller. But the thing is, that's missing features. Like, significant features missing from that that this isn't this literally if you had told me this was nintendo's new pro controller for switch i would believe you that's how well put together this feels and how all the functionality works it's just it's flawless i honestly have a very hard time finding a flaw in this controller if you want to call it a flaw i will say you want to want missing features it doesn't have hd rumble so if you're looking for that more fine-tuned rumble from your Switch, which I don't know many people that are, it doesn't have that. It's just basic rumble with five different settings. But still, man, I can't suggest this controller enough. In fact, so many people that bought it off that ad actually went into the comment section and said thank you. And I've seen DMs and tweets at me. Thank you. Thank you for you know to doing that ad spot. I would have never heard of this controller otherwise. I've been talking about this controller for days and days and days because, guys, when I get paid to do an ad, like Into the AM, I actually legitimately like Into the AM shirts, and thank you so much for sponsoring this video, but it's not as if this is something I wear every day, right? I'll, I'll wear these shirts, you know, maybe once or twice a week at most. It's not necessarily part of my daily use, my daily attire, and when other companies, you know, do sponsors for things, I'll do my ad spots, and, and you know, like Toner, the Toner microphone, I have better mics, so I personally don't use the Toner microphones, but that's the thing. They sent me this and I only intended to make that ad and then just kind of set this aside and not think about it like most other third party controllers. But instead, I'm so impressed. I can't stop talking about this Ghoulie Kit King Kong 2 Pro Controller. It's phenomenal. Like, I'm putting a link down in the description. Uh, it will be an Amazon affiliate link just to be super clear on that. You do not need to buy this if you don't want to. I'm not gonna force anyone's hands. But yeah, I this controller is, bar none, the best controller for Switch. And I say that with no trepidation in my voice. It is better than anything Nintendo has given you, better than any other third-party third company. And heck, with hall sensors in here, you could argue that it might be better than Xbox and PlayStation 2, although, you know, people have their, their own viewpoints on that. Now, why do we have two of these things? Well, uh, we are actually going to be giving away one of these during our Prime Gaming Fest this June. And I'm actually in talks with the company right now behind the scenes to get my hands on even more of these to give away. See if they want to, you know, sponsor some more of these to give away. I, I would like to give away, you know, 10 to 20 of these if I possibly can. Uh, but again, that's not happening until June. And you know what? Why wait till then? Go buy the damn thing right now. It might not even be in stock then because a lot of YouTubers are talking about this controller and they're talking about it because it's that impressive. No drift. All the features of a normal controller. The rumble's not quite as good, but it's passable. My lord, I... <sighs> Thank you, Ghoulie Kit, for contacting me, sponsoring and doing um, and, and sending me another one to give away. I cannot thank you enough. I, I, I've, I am blown away. I have never been this impressed by a product in my entire life that's been sent to me from a third party company. Like I was impressed with Switch. I was impressed with the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller. I was impressed with the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X in general. But I've never been impressed by third party stuff in the way I am like this. This feels like a first party controller fixing everything and adding functionality. I want to make this clear. It's not going to make you a pro gamer, but I'm actually enjoying playing games again on Switch. It's like they feel fresh. It's like what I was doing before, this just feels so much more precise. I almost want to play Smash Bros, and you guys know I don't even like that game. But it's so damn precise. Maybe that was the problem for me the whole time. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.